Sword back here. You can do it. Good evening and welcome to the January 26, 2015 meeting of the Town of Scarborough Planning Board. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Karen, could you please call the roll? Ms. Auglis? Here. Mr. Beely? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Fellows? Here. Mr. Mazur? Here. Mr. DuPont? Here. And Mr. Wood? Here. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to welcome uh, Roger Beely to the board. Good to have you, and it's great to have a full board here now. And I'll just note for the record that um, Ms. Auglis is first alternate, and Mr. Beely is second alternate. Uh, next item on the agenda, approval of minutes from the January 5th, 2015 meeting. Excuse me. Wait a minute. Let's go back to that. I think she's a full voting member. Nope. Nope. No. Okay. Move approval, Mr. Chairman? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're right. Um, because Mike has... No, I'm sorry. First, Mr. Bailey is second. And Mike, I'm sorry. Mike Wood is first alternate. You're right. Mike Wood... It's oh, first alternate. And Mr. Beely is second alternate. You think it's higher than me? You might want to. You might. You, the Mr. council. Uh, <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Mike. You might want to check the town council minutes to confirm. Okay. The council did appoint Mr. Wood as a full voting member and Ms. Uglis as the first alternate. I thought that really? was made clear to you. Clearly, it was really? not. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you. Well, we will straighten that out. Apologies for any confusion there. And I might add, for the record, it doesn't matter to me if the council wants to reopen the uh, discussion based on your recommendation, Mr. Chairman. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll get that clarified. Thank you. So, with that, next item is approval of minutes from the January 5th, 2015 meeting. Move approval, Mr. Chairman. We have approval. Second. The second. Any discussion? All in favor? Should stay unanimous. I abstain. With an abstention. I wish here. Thank you. Item number four on our agenda: Star Homes Inc. requests final subdivision review for a four-lot residential subdivision off Burnham Road, titled Burnham Heights Subdivision. Mr. Chase. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Ms. Applicant. The applicant is before the board, as you just mentioned, for final review. Um, it, the application received preliminary review on December 8th of 2014. This is a, for a four-lot residential subdivision in the RF district. It's also in the Aquifer Overlay uh, uh, district as well. Um, in advance of the meeting, you should have received uh, plan comments from uh, town planning department, town engineer, as well as Woodard and Kern, our civil engineers on the item. Um, to that end, um, the engineers have just a couple of minor comments with regards to some uh, detail items in staff's comments. Uh, we did flag a couple of items uh, with regards to, again, some details on notations, and uh, in particular, uh, in terms of design elements, to the items that were discussed during preliminary review that the board may want to um, give further consideration to were regards to uh, buffering along the streetscape, uh, preservation of the scenic uh, char character of the, this corridor of the road was discussed. Um, the applicant has provided some notation to that regard, but it may be worthy of exploring, exploring maybe further, uh, f further development of that notation. And also there was some discussion about providing um, buffering between lot lines, sideline setbacks, particularly in regards to existing homes in the neighborhood. Um, and if the board is uh, so inclined, the applicant has provided notations in terms of that, as well as um, consideration of what uh, buffering uh, should be uh, required between the actual subdivision lots themselves. Um, and staff provides some notation in that regard. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you. Thanks, Jay. And I'll turn it over to the applicant. Great. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Bill Thompson with BH2M Engineers. I'm here with Joe Fristacci from Star Homes. And as Jay indicated, we're here with the Burnham Heights Four Lot Conservation Subdivision uh, looking for final approval tonight. Um, 
we had five lots. We're down to four. We uh, looked at uh, the site, uh, considered the concerns and the comments from the neighbors, and Joe's agreed to do it now as a three in one cluster and then the fourth lot off to the right. <clears throat> uh, we were last here December 8th, received preliminary approval, and as Jay indicated, uh, we heard comments and we had some uh, information to, to, to look at and to come back with the final plan. Uh, my submission letter of December 29th uh, outlined uh, a number of the items, which I'll just go down through. Uh, Wooden and Curran on their memo dated 12-2, uh, a revision of note, plan note number 25 to remove the reference of a uh, no disturbance for driveways through the buffers. Well, the driveways are coming in the front. There are no driveways through the buffer, so that was uh, a no needed note. Um, we've shown silt fence um, on sh uh, plan sheet two, which is the grading plan. And we've also increased the uh, silt fence to come along the face of the buffer. Any site grading won't migrate into those no disturbed buffers. Uh, Jim Wendell had one comment, uh, 15 foot wide drainage easement on the front of the two open spaces where they abut the road. Uh, he, the town is going to get an easement on there for drainage and maintenance should that ever be needed. Staff comments from the 12 8 14 meeting notes. Uh, plan note 15, that residential calculation has been checked and redone and it does support the four lot that we're proposing tonight. Plan note 28 was added and that basically references that the project is also located over the aquifer overlay district and the conditions that we need to meet which are outlined in the ordinance. Uh, plan note seven needed to also include the fact in the zoning that we are in the aquifer overlay district, which has been <coughs> added. Uh, to comply with plan note 26, uh, we've added additional uh, pins along the fronts of these uh, no, no disturbed buffers. Uh, we didn't have them quite at the spacing the uh, or ordinance uh, regulates. Uh, we've also added uh, at the front corners, if you will, with the buffers. Um, about the buildable area uh, of each lot, we're also going to add uh, two sections of split rail fence to basically, again, uh, delineate uh, that area that uh, there shouldn't be any disturbance beyond that. They also show on sheet two the grading plan, which is a little bigger scale than what this has here. And then revision notes were added to the to the plans to reflect all of our submissions. In my uh, uh, plans tonight, uh, I, I received uh, a few comments again from staff and Wooded and Curran, and I'll go through those briefly. Um, Jim Wendell again on the 15-foot buffer, he just wanted us to add that it's for the benefit of the town of Scarborough uh, in that language, so that has been added. Uh, again, we talked about the net residential calculations. Um, those have been completed and supported. Wooded and Curran, um, Basically, I one comment, and that was on the site grading and erosion control sheet two, and I had already mentioned that to you. They wanted to see additional fill fence along the face of that. So we accommodated Wooded and Curran, uh, Jim Wendell's comment. And then I uh, received also uh, three or four comments from Jay for staff comments. And uh, let's see, Jay's first one, again, he just reiterated about the uh, net residential calculations, which have been done. Um, the second one is a split rail fence section at lot corners at stormwater buffer. And note 26 um, wanted to beef that up or, or expand on that, if you will. The staff offered the final recommendation, and it, it now says additional, additionally, split rail fence section shall be added to each individual lot as shown on plan sheet 2 prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. So we've expanded note, <coughs> excuse me, 26 to reflect that. Uh, also, um, we, had a, we have a note on the plan here about the, uh, the designation of the buffers, and that note has been just kind of clarified a little bit and now reads 75 foot no disturbed buffer and forested stormwater buffer. So it just sort of had a dual purpose, so we, we made that note uh, a little clearer. Uh, on the uh, preliminary approval, the staff note 25 has been modified, no, excuse me, 29, and that's on the tree cutting or clearing along the lot frontage, and Jay had mentioned this in his opening. We're, we're trying to be sensitive to, obviously, to the neighborhood. Now, we have three driveways that'll be individual driveways and then one off to the uh, 
to the side as a separate uh, separate lot. My note now, 29, says tree cutting or clearing along frontage shall be limited within the 25-foot setback to trees and vegetation under four inch diameter and as necessary to ensure adequate sight lines at the proposed driveway locations. So I think, I think we can accomplish what everybody wants, um, just be able to cut a driveway in depending on which side of the uh, lot the driveway is going to be on and, and limit, limit the cutting. Joe has no intentions of, of clear cutting uh, the fronts of the lots. Uh, the houses will be set back, as you can see from the, the plan. Uh, so I think Note 25 uh, hopefully you know, will, will be supported by the, by the board. Uh, there was one other note 30 we put on our plan that says, within the side setbacks of each lot, there shall remain a 10-foot wide no-cut buffer, except for dead or diseased trees. And again, what we're going to try to do is there are really two two lots with existing neighbors, if you will. Um, this is something Joe is, is um, going to monitor. It's not a town um, monitoring issue or, or a reflection of what the code officer needs to look at. Basically, for the buyer of the lot or the builder, note 30 is just to give them, uh, again, a little more guidance and, and guidelines on how Joe wants to keep the the, the buffer, if you will, and a little more privacy between uh, between houses. So um, that note, again, is on there just for, for the benefit of the, the lot buyer or or the homeowner if, if, uh, if they're not the same same party. Uh, I believe that covers everything that Jay had. Um, again, we've gone through the plan. I have made those changes to notes. They're not on your plan because they just came to me as part of your process uh, a couple days ago. So those notes are up for discussion and we hope that uh, meets with the approval of the board. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Phil. Um, the applicant is seeking final approval tonight. Uh, before we turn over to the board for discussion and any potential uh, vote, um, we are making this one available again for public comment. So I'd invite anyone from the public who's interested to approach the podium now, uh, state your name and address. Just ask that you keep your comments to five minutes or less. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I'm uh, Charles Spencer. I live at 125 Burnham Road, so my home would be directly across from the uh, proposed building lots. Um, I did send Mr. Chase a uh, email earlier this week, and uh, so I don't know if you received that. But I'm just read it off for record. We did receive it, but feel free to go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Um, following the public comments regarding the Burnham Heights subdivision, it was interesting to hear from the board that this is not a subdivision design previously seen in Scarborough. And the open land, Scarborough lands, that the proposed design is, is not desirable. Large amount of wetlands located on Burnham Road have allowed a potential developer to optimize building where it would not normally occur. I understand the conservation subdivision allows a change of zoning for house lots when there is unbuildable land des designated to conservation. However, this clustering of homes directly impacts many of the people living on Burnham Road who have all followed the zoning requirements. We truly do not believe this is what the conservation subdivision was designed for. We absolutely, absolutely agree with conservation. However, our concern is how this will impact our very short stretch of road, which leads us to ask conservation for who. It is so disappointing to hear the words conservation subdivision when the description of conservation is exactly what is not being happening on the 700 foot road frontage. In describing conservation, we think of the careful use and preserving of natural resources in order to protect them from exploitation. This subdivision is destructive by not protecting the environment of Burnham Road. Develop, the developer is not using conservation to build the design of this subdivision, but exploiting it for its optimal financial gain. How sad that it is that 
excuse me, how sad that this developer who has no connection to our Scarborough home environment may receive permission to change an already established rural zoning area. Um, thank you for taking the time to read our continued concerns regarding Burnham Heights subdivision. I, just on a little side note that I mean, you might all not be aware that that land across was um, maybe two years ago previously um, forested for, uh, for, I believe it was the hardwood. So it's, it's pretty sparse on where they're going to be um, building these lots. Um, you know, as long as Eileen and I have been, that's my wife, have been living there, we had the understanding that someone was going to build across the road. I, that is not what we, we're concerned with. It's just how they're clustered together. You know, as I stated before when I was here um, a few months ago, is that everybody on that road, we all have 200 road frontage. And then here we have a cluster of homes. It's just going to be side by side. And it's, is it really a subdivision? You know, I think of a subdivision as a one road going in and houses off it. And, and I, just the word subdivision does not fit to this, to my, it might be to the law, but it just doesn't fit to me. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Spencer. Is there anyone else? All right, seeing no one else, we'll close the public comment period. I will note that we did receive, uh, in addition to the, to the uh, letter that Mr. Spencer just read to us, an email dated uh, December 21st, 2014 from Priscilla Dunn um, on this as well, and I believe everyone has a copy of that. And we do appreciate the, the neighborhood input. Um, so now we'll begin board discussion, and uh, Susan, would you like to start us off? I'm afraid I'm still not really clear on just what we are being offered by the applicant in terms of the, um, well, I'm looking at the review <coughs> letter and arrow number three, the preservation of the scenic character along this stretch of road. Would you just review with me again what it is that's going to happen along that stretch? Uh, could I ask you what letter you're referring to? Or? Uh, this is a um, <coughs> staff comment hmm. on materials submitted for final review. Okay. So I, it came to the board members. It, I'm not sure, did it go to the applicant? It did. Okay. <coughs> and again, I mean, we, we, we went through this, but I would just like to be comfortable to understanding just what's going to happen in terms of keeping as much of the rural character of this stretch as we can while providing the driveway. Okay, I, I guess what our goal is, <clears throat> is we talk about the first 10 feet of the front setback to be left in this natural state. Well, we also have about 10 feet of land area from the edge of the pavement. So you're gonna have at least 20 feet uh, to, to 35 feet of forested frontage with basically a driveway cut through and then dead or diseased trees. I don't think Joe would have any reason to cut anything other than to get the driveway in. And then obviously if there's a dead or diseased tree. So within probably 35 feet of, of depth into the lot from the edge of the pavement, you're gonna see the forest that's there now. There's a mix of trees, so. I think that this is, I'm not sure what to do about this. Maybe just a um, thing to staff. Um, this concern about how this is going to affect the rural environment, I would like to think that we could just make a note that says that we will make sure that during the actual building that, you know, because what I'm hearing is no more than necessary. Well, can we take a look at what's necessary before it's mm -hmm. done? You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. yeah, I did hear the applicant talk about how in staff comments we suggested trying to pick a, a diameter of trees. I mean, when, when um, when I've driven up and down the road to try to get a sense of what's there. You know, most of what's in front of the homes that I've seen are the more significant trees, and then there may be some little shrubbery that people have planted around their house. Um, it seemed to make sense in staff's estimation to consider 
maintaining those mature trees to the best of our ability, recognizing that the understory is unlikely to be retained. Most people don't have that in their front yards. But um, so I, I believe I heard the applicant or the applicant's representative in their um, discussion talking about how they would consider modifying that note to maintaining uh, uh, vegetation, basically um, allowing the removal of anything at four inches or under in diameter and then maintaining larger trees, but for those that need to be removed for a driveway. And we could enhance that note to talk about um, uh, uh, coordinating with town staff on the removal of the trees. We did something similar to this to a subdivision off Two Rod Road. Um, I'm just saying that this is the yep. kind of thing that, you know, there's, there's concern. Mm -hmm. Let's just make a note on the approval that says we will pay attention to that concern as it, is, as it evolves. I'm sure the client applicant doesn't mind. And thank you. That's my only comment. Okay. Thanks, Susan. If I may address that, my name is Joe Fustacci. I'm the applicant. These lots are uh, somewhere in excess of 110, 115 feet wide. Mm -hmm. The maximum that we will cut a drive will be 25 feet. So they will remain. Uh, almost 100 feet of, of tree buffer, if you want to call it that, on the front of the property, which is considerably more than what may be up and down Burnham Road. So if you want to make a, a, a note on the plan, no more than 25 feet for the driveway, I've got no problem with that. Uh, but we will, we will probably have more trees on the front of these lots than what's in the neighborhood. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Roger, I know you just joined us. I'm oh, off side. Nothing else? All right. I have no questions. No? Mr. Mazur? Yeah, uh, I think they've addressed all of the issues. The, I'm going to take a little different uh, recommendation here. But if and when the project is approved, I want to make sure that the hours that the trucks are going in and out uh, minimize as far as impact on the neighbors are concerned. You know, I, I understand construction is construction is construction, but I think there are ways that uh, we've had other instances of this in the past that uh, the amount of noise and, and disruption is kept down to a roaring whatever. Okay. The, the good. The hours are dictated in the ordinance. Do you want yeah. To just to support those. Yeah. I think I think the hours are. Um, no earlier than 7 o'clock, 7 a.m. in the morning, and uh, you know I think it's somewhere after 6 o'clock. But most of my people will be between the hours of, of uh, uh, 7 and 5. If you want to restrict it even more than that, that's fine. But I mean, this is a no. I just want to make sure there's another project <laughs> ongoing right now, and because I'm I'm very aware of the rules are being bent, and that irritates yeah. me, even though the yeah. ordinance is in place. With with trucks, so I just want to reinforce that. We so certainly will stay within that. that okay. uh, Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Dupont. I'm okay with the project overall. I mean, we covered everything we can under our uh, our powers. I'm going to nitpick a little bit on your declarations, page four, article four. No member may store anything on any portion of the open space without prior written consent of the executive board. I don't think we should store anything in that space to begin with. And there's no definition of what the executive board is. So I guess staff can deal with that as far as defining what that executive board is. And it's just four lot owners, but there's, it's a cookie cutter <laughs> thing you put out here. So what is the executive board and delete that part of storing anything in that open space? I mean, that's that's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Wood? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, a little late to the party here, I understand, so um, I know you've gone through uh, a lot of details over the previous couple months. But I just wanted to have a short conversation on a couple things you said regarding driveways. And you used the word side. I mean, my thinking is that the driveways would be accessed from the front. In the front that's, of your that's correct. I'm not sure what I meant. We were talking about side setbacks, but the driveways would come in off the frontage of the lots. And um, 
uh, I'm sorry, it's uh, Joe. Joe spoke of uh, limiting the width of a driveway to 25 feet. I mean, that that'd be pretty wide driveway. The clearing for it. When you build your driveway, you may have to grade off and so forth. So 25 feet would give you the ability to to get the driveway. Okay, so you're not talking about a finished driveway that's 25 feet wide. No, no. Hmm. All right, more like 10 to 12 feet. That that 25 foot will allow um, a place to put the snow. Disturbed area. Well, you would have probably a paved area of 12 feet, 12 to 14 feet, yeah. with another five on either side of it. And as I said, that will allow you to plow the snow. Uh, branches won't, you know, okay. uh, overhang into the driveway. So it, it will only be 14 foot maximum width. Okay, thank you. All right. And um, on lot on lot three, uh, the, well, the, all the lots show a shaded area in the front that, if I'm reading the plan correctly, indicates uh, where a well could be put. Uh, should it include that buffer area, or am I, uh, forgive me, these plans are small for me, but... Um, uh, so the only place, uh, uh, the well zones in the front are, are uh, a minimum of 25 feet away, and then again, the nitrate plumes... Uh, no, the nitrate plumes don't come into play here. That's why the wells are all out in the front. Right. So, but the shaded area goes... goes um, uh, south, if you will, of the building envelope. Is that is that by design? Is that okay? Yes, the wells are up in the front of the house. Can they be, uh, for staff, can that be outside the building envelope? They could be located outside the building envelope, but I do think you raised a good point. I think that the board um, would be helpful if you would weigh in on is what is the limit of, because certainly a well would require, you know, some clearing to get a well truck in there and what have you. Um, so I think if the board, um, want to consider further, uh, you know, if the interest is maintaining the, the, the streetscape, I think we uh, need to still talk about sort of the extent of the uh, limited clearing along the front yard. Is it the entire front yard setback, which mm -hmm. is in, in the uh, conservation subdivision design, the 25 foot? Um, is that sort of what we're talking about? Is it a lesser extent? And to your point, should we allow wealth to be exempt from that tree clearing or not? Well, I, I, I haven't uh, performed a sidewalk up here. I, I, I saw a satellite image. It appeared to be heavily wooded from the satellite image. So it, would it be fair to say that uh, from the street, from the curb to the beginning of the building envelope is fairly treed? That's correct. So. I mean, w would it be a hardship on the applicant if you limited the well area to the building envelope? I think that would satisfy uh, the point that Jay is making also, if that's in fact true. that Those areas are certainly uh, available for that to happen. Yeah. 25-foot front yard. 25-foot yes. front yard. Now at the wells, just in these shaded areas outside the setback. There's, 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 a lot, there's plenty of room for that, so that could happen. Okay, so I, I just offer that for consideration uh, to the point of maintaining that treescape. Sure. Uh, and then on lot three, it looks like a very limited area, according to the shaded area, where a well might be permitted. Yes, these, these two areas are on each side of the lot, uh, probably, you know, 30 by 30 areas. And a well, as we know, a well casing is, yeah. doesn't need a lot of room. So. Okay. Yeah. Can, can I ask why it's so limited there? Again, it's just the uh, the assumption of, of the location of the septic systems, nitrate plumes, of how they travel, 100-foot uh, separation, and any activity across the street with wells and septic. So those are the the absolute, you know, the most conservative positions, hmm. uh, or locations rather, that would uh, support a well location on each lot. So it's dictated by a number of those uh, studies that we've done, the nitrate study and separation. Okay, uh, I take your word for it. it. Just it just appears uh, visually the other lots. It just doesn't follow the same convention. I mean, I see the nitrate plumes. I see them moving in the opposite direction. I understand the hundred foot. Um, I'm just curious why it was such a limited area where those wells. And again, the assumptions of what's happening across the street, the nitrate plumes coming in this okay. direction. All right. So it creates a uh, an area that we don't want to put a well in. Okay. Uh, and the only other comment I had uh, was, uh, now the conservation area, 
Is that going to be limited to the inhabitants of these four homes, this homeowners association, or open to the general public? Not the general public. I believe it'll be the it'll be the homeowners and the immediate abutters will have an easement to be able to pass through the back, cross country okay. skiing, snow showing, or. And is that easement the one that? It's not designated specifically. It's just all of the open space would be available to the homeowners and the, I believe, Joe, it was the immediate abutters. Is that in writing? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, t for the immediate abutters and the homeowners to access the open space. Correct. Uh, they all can do that from their property. That's correct. Okay. And the... Um, the um, homeowners' documents. I would just uh, I would just ask that it might be reviewed by you know town attorney just to make sure they're complete and um, comprehensive enough to cover all the points that we wish for them to be made. Because the purpose, if I if I am to assume the pr the real purpose of having a homeowners association really is just to maintain the open space. Is that is that really the main purpose of that? In, in this situation, yes. So what kind of maintenance do you envision? Just again, if there's trees that blow down, that's the biggest thing. Dead or diseased trees that, that need to be removed for the safety of the... Maybe maybe the split rail fencing that you're putting in would be... A, yeah, those are on the lots. So okay, so that'd be obligation yeah. of the homeowner? Correct. The ordinance, uh, the, the town's ordinance on the conservation subdivision requires the residual land to be in uh, one of three ownerships. Um, homeowners Association, mm -hmm. the town, and Jay, what's the third? A land trust or a other land conservation? Trust. The town doesn't want this. No. Right. The land trust doesn't want it. Okay. So by process of elimination, the Homeowners Association receives it. Okay. So I just wanted to get a sense of what kind of maintenance you envision. There's no maintenance. There's no maintenance. There's no association fees, anything of that nature. It's just the residual land goes into that entity, um, and there will be... Um, each owner will have one twenty, uh, one, a twenty-five percent ownership in it. Again, it's just someone has to have it, and it's the home. The uh, in this case, it's the uh, homeowners association. Okay. I did another one um, two years ago, I think it was, on Green Acres Lane, and there was four four and a half acres that I gave to the town, and we put some a bridge and some walking trails there uh, that are supposed to be established. But the town gladly took that land. It had some benefit to more neighbors. This land doesn't really have a lot of benefit to uh, the town or other neighbors than the abutters. All right. Thank you. So uh, I'm generally pleased with, uh, with uh, the subdivision as it looks uh, today. Um, my only comment would be if we seek approval tonight, that there might be a condition that suggests that the uh, the well uh, zones uh, not include that, um, for lack of a better term, that setback from the street, that it be contained within the building envelope as depicted on the plans. I think my note 29, Mr. Chairman, uh, indicates, well, it, it I think it almost covers it. It says limited to setback to trees, vegetation under four inch diameter, and as necessary to ensure adequate sight lines at the proposed driveway location. So I'm not sure if that's um, inclusive enough, uh, but to, to exclude the wells being in that, in that I'm thinking, area. I, I think both of them can work together nicely, don't you? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so what I think I'm hearing uh, tonight from my fellow board members is that people are generally pleased with where we are at this point, obviously with a few kind of technical and logistical caveats, and um, I think that's where I am as well. Um, I don't really think I have any, any questions that haven't already been asked. I do appreciate the, um, the uh, responsiveness to the, to the prior comments from this board as well as from the, from the senior planner. Um, just a general comment, uh, partly in response to some of the public comments that we've gotten tonight and previously. I do realize that sometimes the term conservation subdivision can sound like a little bit of an oxymoron. Um, 
because you're talking about subdivision slash development and conservation sort of together. Uh, but I do want to reiterate, and it's been stated before, but I want to reiterate now that, um, that this project as proposed is in full compliance with the town's conservation subdivision ordinance. Um, it is somewhat unique, at least in my experience, in that rather than having a sort of a dedicated access road that goes into a, what a lot of people would typically think of as a traditional subdivision that's sort of off the main road, this one has four house lots right on the road. Um, and we've discussed that previously, that that is a little bit different. Nevertheless, um, it does meet uh, the letter of the ordinance and I think the, the spirit of it ultimately. Um, so um, with that, um, I would uh, like to propose that I a, uh, put a motion forward with some conditions and uh, we'll entertain a vote on that. I move to approve the application of Star Homes, Inc. prepared by BH2M under the provisions of the Town of Scarborough Zoning, zoning Ordinance and Subdivision Ordinance for the final subdivision plan of Burnham Heights Subdivision with the following findings and conditions. Findings. The applicant proposes a four-lot residential subdivision with access off of Burnham Road. The residential subdivision is located within the Rural Farming District, RF, and the Aquifer Protection Overlay District and has been designed in accordance with the conservation subdivision standards. The Planning Board finds that the subdivision meets the conservation subdivision design standards with an excess of 50% open space, the preservation of wetlands, and residential lots designed to meet the space and bulk requirements of Section 7A. In addition, the Planning Board finds that the subdivision meets Section 4 and 6 of the subdivision ordinance ensuring that the development meets minimum standards for the protection of public health, safety, and welfare. Conditions. The subdivision shall be developed in accordance with the subdivision plans entitled Burnham Heights Final Plan Conservation Subdivision prepared by BH2M dated July 2014 and revised December 29, 2014, sheets one through three. The plan set shall be revised to address comments contained in the Senior Planner's Memo, the Memo of Woodward and Curran, and to otherwise address the issues identified by the Board during the deliberation. Prior to the release of the attested final subdivision plan to the applicant for recording at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, the applicant shall A, pay the required traffic impact fees, and B, execute and record all documentation necessary to comply with the Town's post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance. No certificates of occupancy shall be issued until the 15-foot drainage and maintenance easement has been executed. Final condition is that the applicant shall amend the homeowners association covenants to remove the statement which allows storage of materials on the open space. That's the motion. I'll second. A second. Sorry. All right. We now have a second the discussion. Um, just a clarification, really. Sure. The um, removal of the items from the open space does that include the buffer? Is there anything to be to discuss whether or not something should be allowed to be stored on the buffer? Is that, is that really impacted? Well, there's the. Um, so I know it's private property. Right, it's private property. We don't tip. I mean, if right. folks want to store, you know, their stack of wood in the side yard setback, they can. But there will be limitations on clearing. At this point, what we're talking about is limitations on clearing, as I understand it, to be within the 25 foot yard front yard setback, and then there was the two 10 foot um, set uh, uh, clearing limitations to the existing abutters. That would be to the. Whipple property into the, I believe it's the Helen property. Um, and those would be the board's conditions of approvals. If the applicant wants to further reduce cutting between, you know, say lots three and two, the internal side yard setbacks, that's certainly at their discretion, but I don't know that that's, a, a, if that's something the board believes is in the interest of the town and to meet the ordinance, we can certainly go down that route, but. Um, 
Otherwise, I think that, that, that wasn't my intent. It was okay. just in the open space to begin with, okay. period. No storage in that yep. joint open space. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Wood, did you have any particular language re related to the, the wells that, that you would like to see added to the conditions? I would, uh, I would like uh, that uh, I amend the motion to add the condition that the, uh, the wells, um, the location of the well be limited to the building envelope as depicted on the plan. Thank you. So second uh, All right. amendment motion. All right. Thank you. We're still in discussion. Yes. I forgot to ask a quick question just um, uh, for staff. Uh, Jay, does the, uh, the layout here, it doesn't cross over another zone, does it not? Is it all RF here? It is all RF. That is correct. Yes. Because uh, it, it appears that one of the lots to the right, not not part of this submission, uh, when it when it meet the uh, square footage for an RF, is this another? It's Pre previously probably approved a previously approved lot or a lot that was carved off okay. many years ago. Um, right. Yeah, I, I don't believe it was part of subdivision. It may have been, but I don't think so. I think it's just probably an old lot that's All right. grandfathered existing nonconformance. All right, very good. Nothing further. Thank you. Any further discussion? All, right. All in favor of the amended motion? Should I to be unanimous? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Take a vote on the main motion now. Now you take a motion. <laughs> now we will. Because <laughs> <laughs> have our Robert's rules on here all the time now. Right. I know. He was, as long he as we have Nick in the right chair. As long as we have Nick here. As long as we have our parliamentary uh, <laughs> expert here. Take this, you know, so now right. we'll uh, have a vote on the main motion itself. Main motion itself. <laughs> all in favor? Show that to be unanimous. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. David taught you well. <laughs> I know. Item number five, Habitat for Humanity of Greater Portland requests final subdivision review for 13 lot residential subdivision off Broad Turn Road titled Foster Farm Subdivision 2. Jay? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Let's see, as board members who uh, may note, this item was actually on your last two agendas and had been tabled at the applicant's request uh, as they had been waiting for their DEP permit to come in. At this time, their DEP permit has, is in hand and we do have a copy of that. Um, just by way of background for our newer board members and those in the audience, um, just the, the proposed activity is on property that is currently town owned. Um, it was purchased by the town in 2006 for the express express purpose of creating affordable housing as well as land conservation. To that end, the town council entered into an agreement with the Habitat for Humanity uh, for Greater Portland um, for the development of the affordable housing component of, of, the, uh, of the vision. The application prior to coming to the board held a number of neighborhood meetings, received a preliminary approval from this board on October 27th. And as I mentioned, since that time, we've really been uh, waiting on their DEP permit, which was the big item. And then there were a few other uh, staff comments, uh, sort of technical merits to work through, which at this point, um, staff is pleased to, to say that we've worked through those. You will have received comments from Woodern and Kern and Jim Wendell prior to this meeting. Um, we have received a revised plan set that addressed those issues. They were pretty technical in nature. One was to ensure there's positive flow from a uh, foundation drain. Um, the other was related to, oh, just ensuring that the plan sheets uh, accurately reflected the amount of wetland impacts consistently throughout the plan set, and that has been revised. Um, so at this point, there are no further staff comments, um, and should the board be so inclined, we have prepared a draft motion for your consideration. <laughs> Thank you. I'll turn it over to the applicant's representative. Great. Thank you, uh, members of the board. My name is Lee Allen with Northeast Civil Solutions, uh, joined tonight by Mark Primo from Habitat for Humanity of Greater Portland. Um, I think Jay has covered it. I don't believe I have anything to add. I think we've finally wrapped up everything. It's all neat and tidy, and uh, gladly answer any questions that you might have. Great. Thank you. I think this one is pretty well baked at this point. Um, Jay said we've been primarily waiting for the DEP permit. Uh, does anyone on the board have any questions?
questions or comments this time? Mr. Wood? Thank you. Hi, Lee. Um, the, the access for the town of Scarborough, the citizens of the town of Scarborough to, um, to enjoy the natural area for yep. past recreation? Yep. Um, can you just illustrate to me in words, you know, it, uh, do I have an opportunity to go there, park my car, and yeah. you know, not be in the way of the right of way or anything like that? Correct. Um, on this plan, uh, the, the right of way, this will be a town road. That's a town public right of way. Um, the brown area in just off to the west of lot three is a gravel parking area okay. that will accessible for two cars. And then there, there will be a trail off from that. Um, it kind of doubles as access to the underdrain pond as well as it will take off to the west and there will be a crossing across the brook to, to gain the other 15 acres. Um, I might add that isn't the only way to access this land. Um, there's a public access off the end of Saratoga Lane as well to, to get to the same property. Okay. Um, that's not shown here, but I take your word out of it. But, yeah. Okay. Um, and the, these, these are all sewer and Correct. public water? Correct. Uh, and they all have um, pumps? Yes. Each home? Yes. Um, just for my benefit, I mean, uh, so most of the uh, subdivisions I've dealt with that, that uh, need to pump up uh, you usually use a centralized type of system, but this one has individual Correct. pumps? Correct. It's a technology that it's been, it, it's been around for a while, but it's gained favor mostly because you don't have that central pump station that would fall to the burden of um, potentially either homeowners association or and a lot of times they petition the Scarborough Sanitary District to take it over. Um, this is something that working with the engineer at the Sanitary District is something that he's strongly in favor of because each individual homeowner is responsible for their ejector pump. It all ties into a single small force main that will pump up to a gravity sewer manhole that's at the intersection of Carpenter Way and um, Broad Turn Road. So this is something that doesn't put a lot of burden on the sanitary district, but is still yet you're in the municipal sewer system. And um, okay, very good. But if one if one of the units fail, mm -hmm. there's no way it can impact another unit. No, there, there's double backflow preventer preventers on each each line within the pump and within the line that's tying into the force main. Okay. Uh, and uh, the only other comment I have is, uh, 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 is there going to be a sound wall built in the near future? <laughs> there actually was a sound study done as part of this project, um, and there will be a fence along um, the back part of this property right here. We had a sound engineer look at it and uh, <laughs> give us recommendations, and we followed them. We looked at a bunch of different things. We looked at berming. Um, we looked at you know, a berm and a fence, and we ended up with just a fence was going to be adequate to, to get to the decibel levels. Because this project is has some federal funding, there were some FHA regulations that we had to kind of go through, and it was a long and kind of crazy process, but we were able to, to meet those standards that the FHA puts out there for sound. Okay. Should in the near future or in the future um, a sound wall be recommended? Because you know how things happen, right? Uh, would that have to go before us again, Jay? For any kind, of, would that be a part of an amended subdivision, or would that be something that DOT would do on their property? No, I don't believe they'd have to come to this board to put up a, a wall or a fence. Um, no. If it's part of a broader highway widening project, you know, I'd, what involvement the board would have at that point. Um, I wasn't around when the highway was last, <laughs> uh, you know, expanded, so I'm not sure what, if any, role the municipal oversight mm. had in that. But um, no, I wouldn't see that as being something that would trigger further subdivision review. Okay. All right, thanks. Anything else? Any other board comments? Great. Just make a point. comment. This project is been a year and a half, two year project? About five year project. We've kind of beat this to death with neighborhood meetings. This project has been scaled down. I think we've drummed up the best project we can, considering where it is, and I have no further comment on that. Happy to see this thing move forward. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. On that note, I will put the motion forward. 
I move to approve the application of Habitat for Humanity of Greater Portland prepared by Northeast Civil Solutions under the provisions of the Town of Scarborough Zoning Ordinance and Subdivision Ordinance for the final subdivision plan of Foster Farm Subdivision 2 with the following findings, waivers, and conditions. Findings. The applicant proposes a 13-lot residential subdivision on 19.5, approximately, acre uh, parcel off of Broad Turn Road. The residential subdivision is located within the Village Residential 2, VR2 district and has been designed in accordance with the village development standards set forth therein. The planning board finds that the subdivision meets the residential density regulations and the open space requirements of the VR2 district. The planning board has reviewed the applicant's proposed plan and related materials as submitted and finds that the final subdivision plan meets the performance standards of sections 4 and 6 of the subdivision ordinance with the following waivers and conditions. Waivers. Number one, permit the proposed subdivision road to be constructed at a width of 22 feet rather than the town standard 24 feet. Number two, due to the scale of development and the trail network providing access to the 14.26 acres of open space, the planning board waived the requirement for sidewalks on both sides of the proposed road network. Number three, with the construction of a trail and access to the remaining open space, the board waived the recreation contribution fee. Conditions. Prior to the release of the attested final subdivision plan to the applicant for recording at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, the applicant shall A, pay the required traffic impact fees, and B, execute and record all documentation necessary to comply with the town's post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance. Is there a second? Second. A second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Shall that to be unanimous? Thank you. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Item number six. BBS Enterprises requests sketch plan review for 62 Muzzy Road. Asian Fusion Restaurant. To introduce this one, Jay. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let's see. Just by way of background or, or process, I guess I should say, sketch plan is an informal discussion uh, at this point with the board uh, to inform the board members of the general parameters of the proposed activities, so the board can understand those on and off-site impacts, as well as for the board to provide guidance. Um, to the applicant as they move forward with their uh, more formal application process. Uh, in terms of staff comments, uh, we flagged items in terms of the shared access, uh, potential, for, uh, uh, potential for shared parking facilities, queried the, uh, the number of parking spaces in the parking field and how that number was arrived at. Um, we also flagged the notion that this project is in the TBC 3 district, which is the Town and Village Center 3, um, which is really um, intended to encourage a pattern of development that serves the local, uh, local market, if you will, and enhances the village centers, and how do the design parameters sort of play in that and highlight the fact that our commercial design standards will be a part and parcel of the review process moving forward. And, um, just encourage the applicant to be thinking about those and talking about those as they prepare their plans and, and maybe start that discussion this evening. With that, Mr. Chair, um, I think that sort of hits the highlights of staff comments at this point. I'll turn it back to you. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to you, Lee. Great. Thank you. Members of the board, Lee Allen again with Northeast Civil Solutions, joined by Mike Richmond, Custom Concepts, he's the architect, and the developers, uh, Jamie Lang um, from BBS Enterprises. Uh, we're proposing a 5,000 square foot Asian fusion restaurant to take advantage of an existing building um, with an addition. There's also a barn that is proposed as storage. Um, there's reasons that that barn is just used as storage and they're not renovating, and I'll let Mike get into that when, when he gets a chance to, to speak. I um, wanted to mention the parking layout. Um, Jade question, well, where did the number came from? Well. The numbers kind of, we're working both ends of this, working how many seats can we actually fit in the restaurant and how much parking could we fit. So when we put the sketch plan together, we put in parking to maximize, honestly, the site. Um, based on where we're coming and where Mike has got with his plans and where we are, I envision that we can probably, at this point, 
reduce by at least 16 spots, if not more. So what we're showing is probably bigger than, than what is necessary and what could actually fit in the size restaurant that, that we're proposing. But again, at the, at the beginning of this, we weren't really sure where we were going, wanted to see how many could we actually fit on site. So, so we know we're, we're back, backing off from what we've shown on this plan. The shared driveway concept, um, Bill Bray has already looked at this for us and there are some traffic concerns with queuing, um, backing up in, in front of the, the driveway. Not saying that we couldn't use our existing driveway, we just thought at this point the probably the best option would be to use the shared driveway as that is a, a better location than the existing driveway um, given the proximity of the two driveways to each other. Um, that being said, we haven't approached the abutter at this point because the, the, the big question we have is whether uh, the use of the barn. Um, is, is it going to be allowed to be used? Is it not? Um, there's lots of things that we, we wanted to use that barn for. Storage, we're going to locate dumpsters actually inside the barn. Um, that dumpster was going to be rolled out just in the morning for it to get picked up and then put right back in the barn. Um, that's why it was kind of located in the front. If you'll notice, just based on the layout, there, there's a stream on the property. The, the stream starts right up in this area. There's an associated stream setback associated with that. So um, from a permitting point of view, there's a lot of our development had to be forced over to the side closest to uh, the creative imaging folks and to the back of the property. That being said, when we talked about how is this going to flow, how is it going to function, where is the parking, the front of the building facing the road is actually really going to be the back of the restaurant. It's going to be dressed up to look like the front of the building, but the main entrance of the building will be located in the back of this, this area. With that, I would be more than happy to turn it over to Mike. I'm sure he can answer a, a lot of your questions. Thank you. Good evening, Mike Richmond, Custom Concepts Architecture. Um, Lee did an excellent job opening it up. The, the challenge with this from a design perspective for a restaurant is it, there's not a lot of room up against the road. So instinctively, you know, I always, anybody naturally tries to put the front door to a restaurant or any building towards the road. We simply don't have the space. Um, so we discuss ways to do that. There's also very little to no pedestrian ac access in this area. I don't even know if there's a sidewalk out in front of this area. Um, so it wasn't a huge concern of ours to, to try to address pedestrian access, especially in that, in that particular area. The building itself has some challenges. Um, the building is a typical old farmhouse. Pardon my shots here. Typical old farmhouse. Um, we've toured this. So I've been through there with my structural engineer. This structure here is actually in pretty good shape and definitely a candidate for, for renovation. The connecting L, on the other hand, is not. It has uh, it's built in a very odd way, structurally unsound, and terrible mold is deteriorating, and anybody construction industry would say, take that piece down. I mean, that, that'd that be pretty wide driveway. But clearing for it. When you build your driveway, you may have to grade off and so forth. So 25 feet would give you the ability to, to get the driveway. Okay, so you're not talking about a finished driveway that's 25 feet wide? No, no. Hmm. All right, more like 10 to 12 feet. That, that 25 foot will allow um, a place to put the snow? Disturbed area. Well, you would have probably a paved area of 12 feet, 12 to 14 feet, yeah. with another five on either side of it. And as I said, that will allow you to plow the snow. Uh, branches won't, you know, okay. uh, overhang into the driveway. So it, it will only be 14 foot maximum width. Okay, thank you. All right. And um, on, lot, on lot three, uh, the, well, the, all the lots show a shaded area in the front that, if I'm reading the plan correctly, indicates uh, where a well could be put. Uh, should it include that buffer area, or am I, uh, forgive me, these plans are small for me, but, um... Uh, so the only place, uh, uh, the well zones are in the front are, are uh, a minimum of 25 feet away, and then again, the nitrate plumes 
No, the nitrate plumes don't come into play here. Right. That's why the wells are all out in the front. Right. So, but the shaded area goes goes um, uh, south, if you will, of the building envelope. Is that is that by design? Is that okay? Yes, the wells are up in the front of the houses. Can they be up for staff? Can that be outside the building envelope? They could be located outside the building envelope, but I do think you raise a good point. I think that the board um, would be helpful if you would weigh in on is what is the limit of, because certainly a well would require, you know, some clearing to get a well truck in there and what have you. Um, so I think if the board um, want to consider further, uh, you know, if the interest is maintaining the, the, the streetscape, I think we uh, need to still talk about sort of the extent of the uh, limited clearing along the front yard is it the entire front yard setback which mm. is in, in the uh, conservation subdivision design the 25 foot um, is that sort of what we're talking about is it a lesser extent and to your point should we allow wells to be exempt from that tree clearing or not well I, I, I haven't uh, performed a sidewalk up here I, I, I saw a satellite image it appeared to be heavily wooded from the satellite image so it, would it be fair to say that uh, from the street, from the curb to the beginning of the building envelope is fairly treed? That's correct. So, I mean, w would it be a hardship on the applicant if you limited the well area to the building envelope? I think that would satisfy uh, the point that Jay is making also, if that's in fact true. that Those areas are certainly uh, available for that to happen. Yeah. 25 foot front yard. 25 yes. foot front setback. Now at the wells, just in these shaded areas outside the setback. This, this, there's a lot. There's plenty of room for that, so that could happen. Okay. Yeah. So I, I just offer that for consideration uh, to the point of maintaining that treescape. Sure. Uh, and then on lot three, it looks like a very limited area, according to the shaded area, where a well might be permitted. Yes, these, these two areas are on each side of the lot, uh, probably, you know, 30 by 30 areas in a well. As we know, a well casing is, yeah. doesn't need a lot of room, so. Okay. Yeah. Can, can I ask why it's so limited there? Again, it's just the, uh, the assumption of, of the location of the septic systems, nitrate plumes of how they travel, 100-foot uh, separation, and any activity across the street with wells and septic. So those are the, the absolute, you know, the most conservative positions hmm. uh, or locations rather that would uh, support a well location on each lot. So it's dictated by a number of those uh, studies that we've done, the nitrate study and separation. Okay. Uh, I'll take your word for it. It just, it just appears uh, visually, the other lots, it just doesn't follow the same convention. I mean, I see the nitrate plumes. I see them moving in the opposite direction. I understand the 100 foot. Um, I'm just curious why it was such a limited area where those wells And again, the assumptions of what's happening across the street, the nitrate plumes coming in this okay. direction. All right. So it creates a, uh, a, an area that we don't want to put a well in. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and the only other comment I had uh, was, uh, now the conservation area, is that going to be limited to the inhabitants of these four homes, this homeowners association, or open to the general public? Not the general public. I believe it'll be the It'll be the homeowners and the immediate abutters will have an easement to be able to pass through the back, cross-country skiing, snowshoeing, or... And is that easement the one that... It's not designated specifically. It's just all of the open space would be available to the homeowners and the, I believe, Joe, it was the immediate abutters. Is that in writing? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, so... Uh, for the immediate abutters and the homeowners to access the open space. Correct. Uh, they all can do that from their property. That's correct. Okay. And the um, the um, homeowners documents. I would just uh, I would just ask they might be reviewed by you know town attorney just to make sure they're complete and um, comprehensive enough to cover all the points that we wish for them to be made. Because the purpose, if I if I am to assume the, pr the real purpose of having a homeowners association really is just to maintain the open space? Is that, is that really the main purpose of that? In, in this situation, yes. So what kind of maintenance do you envision? 
just again, if there's trees that blow down, that's the biggest thing. Dead or diseased trees that, that need to be removed for the safety of the. Maybe maybe the split rail fencing that you're putting in would be. A, you know, those are on the lots. So. Okay, so that'd be obligation yep. of the homeowner. Correct. The ordinance, uh, the, the town's ordinance on a conservation subdivision, requires the residual land to be in uh, one of three ownerships: um, homeowners association. Mm -hmm. The town and Jay, what's the third? A land trust or other land conservation? Trust. The town doesn't want this. No. Right. The land trust doesn't want it. Okay. So by process of elimination, the homeowners association receives it. Okay. But I just wanted to get a sense of what kind of maintenance you envision. There's no maintenance. There's no maintenance. There's no association fees, anything of that nature. It's just the residual land goes into that entity, um, and there will be... Um, each owner will have 120, uh, one, uh, 25% ownership in it. Again, it's just someone has to have it, and it's the home. The uh, in this case, it's the uh, homeowners association. Okay. I did another one um, two years ago, I think it was, on Green Acres Lane, and there was four four and a half acres that I gave to the town, and we put some a bridge and some walking trails there uh, that are supposed to be established. But the town gladly took that land. It had some benefit to more neighbors. This land doesn't really have a lot of benefit to uh, the town or other neighbors than okay. the abutters. All right. Thank you. So uh, I'm generally pleased with, uh, with uh, the subdivision as it looks uh, today. Um, my only comment would be we seek approval tonight that there might be a condition that suggests that the uh, the well uh, zones uh, not include that um, for lack of a better term that setback from the street that it be contained within the building envelope as depicted on the plans I think my note 29 mr. chairman uh, indicates well it, it I think it almost covers it. It's limited to setback to trees, vegetation under four-inch diameter, and as necessary to ensure adequate sight lines at the proposed driveway location. So I'm not sure if that's um, inclusive enough, uh, but to, to exclude the wells being in that, in that I'm area. Think, I, I think both of them can work together nicely, don't you? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so what I think I'm hearing uh, tonight from my fellow board members is that people are generally pleased with where we are at this point, obviously with a few kind of technical and logistical caveats. And um, I think that's where I am as well. Um, I don't really think I have any, any questions that haven't already been asked. I do appreciate the, um, the uh, responsiveness to the, to the prior comments from this board as well as from the, from the senior planner. Um, just a general comment, uh, partly in response to some of the public comments that we've gotten tonight and previously. I do realize that sometimes the term conservation subdivision can sound like a little bit of an oxymoron um, because you're talking about subdivision slash development and conservation sort of together. Uh, but I do want to reiterate, and it's been stated before, but I want to reiterate now that, um, that this project as proposed is in full compliance with the town's conservation subdivision ordinance. Um, it is somewhat unique, at least in my experience, in that rather than having a sort of a dedicated access road that goes into a, what a lot of people would typically think of as a traditional subdivision that's sort of off the main road, this one has four house lots right on the road. Um, and we've discussed that previously, that that is a little bit different. Nevertheless, um, it does meet uh, the letter of the ordinance and I think the, the spirit of it ultimately. Um, so um, with that, um, I would uh, like to propose that I a, uh, put a motion forward with some conditions and uh, we'll entertain a vote on that. I move to approve the application of Star Homes, Inc. prepared by BH2M under the provisions of the Town of Scarborough Zoning, zoning Ordinance and Subdivision Ordinance for the final subdivision plan 
of Burnham Heights subdivision with the following findings and conditions. Findings. The applicant proposes a four-lot residential subdivision with access off of Burnham Road. The residential subdivision is located within the Rural Farming District, RF, and the Aquifer Protection Overlay District and has been designed in accordance with the Conservation Subdivision Standards. The Planning Board finds that the subdivision meets the Conservation Subdivision Design Standards with an excess of 50% open space, the preservation of wetlands, and residential lots designed to meet the space and bulk requirements of Section 7A. In addition, the Planning Board finds that the subdivision meets Section 4 and 6 of the Subdivision Ordinance, ensuring that the development meets minimum standards for the protection of public health, safety, and welfare. Conditions. The subdivision shall be developed in accordance with the subdivision plans entitled Burnham Heights Final Plan Conservation Subdivision prepared by BH2M dated July 2014 and revised December 29, 2014, sheets 1 through 3. The plan set shall be revised to address comments contained in the Senior Planner's Memo, the Memo of Woodward and Curran, and to otherwise address the issues identified by the Board during the deliberation. Prior to the release of the attested final subdivision plan to the applicant for recording at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, the applicant shall A, pay the required traffic impact fees, and B, execute and record all documentation necessary to comply with the town's post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance. No certificates of occupancy shall be issued until the 15-foot drainage and maintenance easement has been executed. Final condition is that the applicant shall amend the Homeowners Association covenants to remove the statement which allows storage of materials on the open space. That's the motion. I'll second. There's a second? Sorry. All right. We now have a second uh, discussion. Um, just a clarification, really. Sure. The um, removal of the items from the open space, does that include the buffer? Is there anything to be to discuss whether or not something should be allowed to be stored on the buffer? Is that that really impacted? Well, there's the... Because um, I know it's private property. Right, it's private property. We don't tip... I mean, if right. folks want to store, you know, their stack their wood in the side yard setback, they can. But there will be limitations on clearing. At this point, what we're talking about is limitations on clearing, as I understand it, to be within the 25-foot yard, front yard setback. And then there was the two 10-foot um, set. Uh, uh, clearing limitations to the existing abutters. That would be to the Whipple property and to the, I believe it's the Helen property. Um, and those would be the board's conditions of approvals. If the applicant wants to further reduce cutting between, you know, say lots three and two, the internal side yard setbacks, that's certainly at their discretion, but I don't know that that's, a, a, if that's something the board believes is in the interest of the town and to meet the ordinance, we can certainly go down that route, but um, otherwise, I think that that's that. That wasn't my intention. It was okay. just in the open space to begin with, okay. period. No storage in that. Yep. Joint open space. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Wood, did you have any particular language re related to the, the wells that, that you would like to see added? To the conditions I would I would like uh, that uh, I amend the motion to add the condition that the uh, the wells um, the location of the well be limited to the building envelope as depicted on the plan thank you Good second uh, all right amend the motion all right thank you you're still in discussion yes I forgot to ask a quick question does um, uh, for staff uh, Jay does the um, the layout here, it doesn't cross over another zone, does it not? Is it all RF here? It is all RF, that is correct, yes. Because uh, it, it appears that one of the lots to the right, not not part of this submission, uh, when, it, when it meet the uh, square footage for an RF, is this another it's pre previously approved It's probably approved a conservation? previously approved lot or a lot that was carved off many okay. years ago. Um, right. Yeah. I, I don't believe it was part of subdivision. It may have been, but I don't think so. I think it's just probably an old lot that's right. grandfathered existing non-conformance. 
All right, very good. Nothing further. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All, right. All in favor of the amended motion? Show that to be unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. you take a vote on the main motion now. Now you take a motion. Now we will. <laughs> Good You're to have our Robert's rules on here all the time now. Right, I know. Uh, as long as we have sitting the in the right chair. As long as we have Nick here. As long as we have our parliamentary uh, expert here. Take this so right. now we'll uh, have a vote on the main motion, main motion right. itself. All in favor? Show that to be unanimous. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nick. David taught you well. <laughs> I know. Item number five, Habitat for Humanity of Greater Portland requests final subdivision review for 13 lot residential subdivision off Broad Turn Road, titled Foster Farm Subdivision 2. Jay? Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let's see, as board members who uh, may note, this item was actually on your last two agendas and had been tabled at the applicant's request uh, as they had been waiting for their DEP permit to come in. At this time, their DEP permit has is in hand, and we do have a copy of that. Um, just by way of background for our newer board members and those in the audience, um, this, the, the proposed activity is on property that is currently town-owned. Um, is purchased by the town in 2006 for the express, express purpose of creating affordable housing as well as land conservation. To that end, the town council entered into an agreement with the Habitat for Humanity uh, for Greater Portland um, for the development of the affordable housing component of, of, the, uh, of the vision. The application prior to coming to the board held a number of neighborhood meetings, received a preliminary approval from this board on October 27th. And as I mentioned, since that time, we've really been uh, waiting on their DEP permit, which was the big item. And then there were a few other uh, staff comments, uh, sort of technical merits to work through, which at this point, um, staff is pleased to, to say that we've worked through those. You will have received comments from Woodern and Kern and Jim Wendell prior to this meeting. Um, we have received a revised plan set that address those issues. They were pretty technical in nature. One was to ensure there's positive flow from a uh, foundation drain. Um, the other was related to, oh, just ensuring that the plan sheets uh, accurately reflected the amount of wetland impacts consistently throughout the plan set, and that has been revised. Um, so at this point, there are no further staff comments. Um, and should the board be so inclined, we have prepared a draft motion for your consideration. <laughs> Thank you. I'll turn it over to the applicant's representative. Great. Thank you, uh, members of the board. My name is Lee Allen with Northeast Civil Solutions, uh, joined tonight by Mark Primo from Habitat for Humanity of Greater Portland. Um, I think Jay's covered it. I don't believe I have anything to add. I think we've finally wrapped up everything. It's all neat and tidy. and gladly answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. I think this one is pretty well baked at this point. Um, as Jay said, we've been primarily waiting for the DEP permit. Uh, does anyone on the board have any questions or comments this time? Mr. Wood? Thank you. Hi, Lee. Um, the, the access for the town of Scarborough, the citizens of the town of Scarborough, to, um, to enjoy the natural area for yes. passive recreation? Yep. Um, can you just illustrate to me in words, you know, it, uh, do I have an opportunity to go there, park my car, and yes. you know, not be in the way of the right-of-way or anything like that? Correct. Um, on this plan, uh, the, the right-of-way, this will be a town road. It's a town public right-of-way. Um, the brown area in just off to the west of Lot 3 is a gravel parking area okay. that will accessible for two cars, and then there, there will be a trail off from that. Um, it kind of doubles as access to the underdrain pond, as well as it will take off to the west, and there'll be a crossing across the brook to to gain the other 15 acres. Um, I might add that isn't the only way to access this land. Um, there's a public asset access off the end of Saratoga Lane as well to to get to the same property. Okay. Um, that's not shown here, but I take your word at it. But yeah. okay. Um, and the these these are all sewer. And right. public water? Correct. Uh, and they all have um, pumps? Yes. Each home? Yes. Um, 
just for my benefit, I mean, uh, so, most of the uh, subdivisions I've dealt with that, that uh, need to pump up uh, usually use a centralized type of system, but this one has individual Correct. pumps? Correct. It's a technology that it's been, it's, it's been around for a while, but it's gained favor mostly because you don't have that central pump station that would fall to the burden of um, potentially either homeowners association or and a lot of times they petition the Scarborough Sanitary District to take it over. Um, this is something that working with the engineer at the sanitary district is something that he's strongly in favor of because each individual homeowner is responsible for their ejector pump. It all ties into a single small force main that will pump up to a gravity sewer manhole that's at the intersection of Carpenter Way and um, Broad Turn Road. So this is something that doesn't put a lot of burden on the sanitary district but is still yet you're in the municipal sewer system. And. Um Okay, very good. But if one if one of the units fail, mm -hmm. there's no way it can impact another unit. No, there, there's double backflow preventer, preventers on each each line within the pump and within the line that's tying into the force main. Okay. Uh, and uh, the only other comment I have is: uh, 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 is there going to be a sound wall built in the near future? <laughs> There actually was a sound study done as part of this project, um, and there will be a fence along um, the back part of this property right here. We had a sound engineer look at it and uh, <coughs> give us recommendations, and we followed them. We looked at a bunch of different things. We looked at berming. Um, we looked at you know a berm and a fence, and we ended up with just a fence was going to be adequate to, to get to the decibel levels because this project is has some federal funding. There was some FHA regulations that we had to kind of go through, and it was a long and kind of crazy process, but we were able to, to meet those standards that the FHA puts out there for sound. Okay. Should in the near future or in the future um, a sound wall be recommended? Because you know how things happen, right? Uh, would that have to go before us again, Jay, for any kind of, Would that be a part of an amended subdivision, or would that be something that DOT would do on their property? No, I don't believe they'd have to come to this board to put up a, a wall or a fence. Um, no. If it's part of a broader highway widening project, you know, I'd, what involvement the board would have at that point. Um, I wasn't around when the highway was last, <laughs> uh, you know, expanded, so I'm not sure what, if any, role the municipal oversight mm -hmm. had in that. But, um, no, I wouldn't see that as being something that would trigger further subdivision review. Okay. All right, thanks. Anything else? Any other board comment? Great. Just a comment. This project has been a year and a half, two year project, about a five year project. <laughs> We've kind of beat this to death with neighborhood meetings. This project has been scaled down. I think we've drummed up the best project we can, considering where it is, and I have no further comment on that. Happy to see this thing move forward. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. On that note, I will put a motion forward. I move to approve the application of Habitat for Humanity of Greater Portland, prepared by Northeast Civil Solutions under the provisions of the Town of Scarborough Zoning Ordinance and Subdivision Ordinance for the final subdivision plan of Foster Farm Subdivision 2 with the following findings, waivers, and conditions. Findings. The applicant proposes a 13-lot residential subdivision on 19.5, approximately, acre uh, parcel off of Broad Turn Road. The residential subdivision is located within the Village Residential 2, VR2 district, and has been designed in accordance with the village development standards set forth therein. The planning board finds that the subdivision meets the residential density regulations and the open space requirements of the VR2 district. The planning board has reviewed the applicant's proposed plan and related materials as submitted and finds that the final subdivision plan meets the performance standards of sections four and six of the subdivision ordinance with the following waivers and conditions. Waivers. Number one, permit the proposed subdivision road to be constructed at a width of 22 feet rather than the town standard 24 feet. Number two, due to the scale of development and the trail network providing access to the 14.26 acres of open space, the planning board waived the requirement for sidewalks on both sides of the proposed road network. Number three, 
With the construction of a trail and access to the remaining open space, the board waived the recreation contribution fee. Conditions. Prior to the release of the attested final subdivision plan to the applicant for recording at the Cumberland County Registry of Deeds, the applicant shall A, pay the required traffic impact fees, and B, execute and record all documentation necessary to comply with the town's post-construction stormwater infrastructure management ordinance. Is there a second? Second. A second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Show that to be unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. And good luck. Item number six. BBS Enterprises requests sketch plan review for 62 Muzzy Road, Asian Fusion Restaurant. To introduce this one, Jay. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let's see. Just. By way of background or, or process, I guess I should say, sketch plan is an informal discussion uh, at this point with the board uh, to inform the board members of the general parameters of the proposed activities so the board can understand those on and off site impacts, as well as for the board to provide guidance um, to the applicant as they move forward with their uh, more formal application process. Uh, in terms of staff comments, uh, we flagged items in terms of the shared access, uh, potential, for, uh, uh, potential for shared parking facilities, queried the, uh, the number of parking spaces in the parking field and how that number was arrived at. Um, we also flagged the notion that this project is in the TVC3 district, which is the Town and Village Center 3. Um, which is really um, intended to encourage a pattern of development that serves the local uh, local market, if you will, and enhances the village centers and how do the design parameters sort of play in that and highlight the fact that our commercial design standards will be a part and parcel of the review process moving forward and um, just encourage the applicant to be thinking about those and talking about those as they prepare their plans and, and maybe start that discussion this evening. That, Mr. Chair, um, I think that sort of hits the highlights of staff comments at this point. I'll turn it back to you. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll turn it over to you, Lee. Great. Thank you. Members of the board, Lee Allen again with Northeast Civil Solutions. Joined by Mike Richman, Custom Concepts. He's the architect. And the developers, uh, Jamie Lang um, from BBS Enterprises. Uh, we're proposing a 5,000 square foot Asian fusion restaurant to take advantage of an existing building with an addition, there's also a barn that is proposed as storage. Um, there's reasons that that barn is just used as storage and they're not renovating, and I'll let Mike get into that when, when he gets a chance to, to speak. Um, wanted to mention the parking layout. Um, Jade question, well, where did the number came from? Well, the number's kind of, we're working both ends of this, working how many seats can we actually fit in the restaurant and how much parking could we fit. So when we put the sketch plan together, we put in parking to maximize, honestly, the site. Um, based on where we're coming and where Mike has got with his plans and where we are, I envision that we can probably, at this point, reduce by at least 16 spots, if not more. So what we're showing is probably bigger than, than what is necessary and what could actually fit in the size restaurant that, that we're proposing. But again, at the, at the beginning of this, we weren't really sure where we're going, wanted to see how many could we actually fit on site. So, so we know we're, we're back, backing off from what we've shown on this plan. The shared driveway concept, um, Bill Bray has already looked at this for us, and there are some traffic concerns with queuing, um, backing up in, in front of the, the driveway. Not saying that we couldn't use our existing driveway, we just thought at this point the probably the best option would be to use the shared driveway as that is a, a better location than the existing driveway, um, given the proximity of the two driveways to each other. Um, that being said, we haven't approached the abutter at this point because the, the, the big question we have is whether uh, the use of the barn. Um, is it going to be allowed to be used? Is it not? Um, there's lots of things that we, we wanted to use that barn for storage. We're going to locate dumpsters actually inside the barn. Um, that dumpster was going to be rolled out just in the morning for it to get picked up and then put right back in the barn. Um, that's why it was kind of located in the front. If you'll notice, just based on the layout, there, there's a stream on the property. The, the stream starts right up in this area. 
an associated stream setback associated with that. So um, from a permitting point of view, there's a lot of our development had to be forced over to the side closest to uh, the creative imaging folks and to the back of the property. That being said, when we talked about how is this going to flow, how is it going to function, where is the parking, the front of the building facing the road is actually really going to be the back of the restaurant. It's going to be dressed up to look like the front of the building, but the main entrance of the building will be located in the back of this, this area. With that, I would be more than happy to turn it over to Mike. I'm sure he can answer a, a lot of your questions. Thank you. Good evening, Mike Richmond, Custom Concepts Architecture. Um, Lee did an excellent job opening it up. The, the challenge with this from a design perspective for a restaurant is there's not a lot of room up against the road. So instinctively, you know, I always, anybody naturally tries to put the front door to a restaurant or any building towards the road. We simply don't have the space. Um, so we discuss ways to do that. There's also very little to no pedestrian access in this area. I don't even know if there's a sidewalk out in front of this area. Um, so it wasn't a huge concern of ours to, to try to address pedestrian access, especially in that, in that particular area. The building itself has some challenges. Um, the building is a typical old farmhouse. Pardon my shots here. Typical old farmhouse. Um, we've toured this. I've been through there with my structural engineer. This structure here is actually in pretty good shape and definitely a candidate for, for renovation. The connecting L, on the other hand, is not. It has, uh, it's built in a very odd way, structurally unsound and terrible mold that's deteriorated and anybody in the construction industry would say, take that piece down. The barn is probably somewhere in the middle of that. It's a beautiful little barn, gorgeous rafters, gorgeous beams inside. Um, but to try to renovate that up to modern standards of a workable restaurant using energy codes, that would be a real challenge. So when we looked at it from that perspective, we started to say, to work with the owners, you know, what's a better use for this? Another issue with the building is, if you look at this here, this cross section is sort of cut through the building the long way. We have the farmhouse. We have the connecting L, which again, taken down. And then we have the barn. The barn floor is approximately three and a half feet lower than the main floor of the main building. So from a design perspective, that's a challenge. To you know, instinctively to me, I would love to put the restaurant or part of it in the barn. But a three and a half different three and a half foot difference within between the structures within a restaurant is really difficult when you consider ADA mm. standards. A ramp that long would be 42 feet. Um, and the workings of an interior of a restaurant, even with servers and food supply, it just it just doesn't make sense. So it, 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 it's a challenge, and it's kind of why I'm looking for feedback, and we've discussed it at length. Um, so what we've elected to do or look at was basically infilling the back left-hand corner of this building. So what I've developed, and this is very, very rough, very preliminary, is an idea where we would infill. Right now the existing farmhouse comes back to here. This would be infill, basically squared off. Quite sure about the roof yet. Really haven't looked at the exterior elevations yet. You know, we'll, we'll get there. Um, but the intention with this is, like Lee had pointed out, it's almost flip flopped. So fortunately, we have a, a client who's really willing to go the extra mile as far as landscaping, hardscaping, proper screening, especially from the road, um, for any utilities that might be new. And we could work very hard, very close with you guys to make sure that happens. Um, but the, basically, you drive around the back. We'd have a covered entry through a airlock and work your way into the restaurant. The idea with the connection between this is that if this is used for storage, it can be very handy to use for the restaurant. And 
having stairs that go from this level to this level for a, a restaurant use and internal use is fine with ADA standards. Um, we, we would probably chew into it somewhat for walk-in cooler space and whatnot. And that's something we can discuss further. But essentially, that's where we're going right now um, with this with this layout. This, uh, this basically occupies the whole first floor. The second floor of the farmhouse, which is over here, which is in great shape, would be used for offices. Essentially, that's that's the point where we are. Unless you have anything else to add. Nothing else from the applicant? Thanks for that introduction. Uh, Susan? Um, I went and drove around the building. Um, I'm pleased that we're going to try to keep this building. Yes. Very nice. Very nice. And the barn. Yippee. Um, this is the kind of thing I think that the zoning was essentially looking for when, we, when it first was developed. To save buildings if they're there. You know, bring them into the development rather than just tearing it down and starting from scratch. And this is a good example of it. Um, I do see the uh, constraints with it being so close to the road, but I think it can be made to work for you. I'm not too sure why the kitchen has to be in there. I'm not too sure why it can't be configured so that the kitchen's in the back and the extra seating's in the front, because <coughs> then the natural patio would be where the kitchen is. You know what I'm saying? I mean, take the fact that you're where you are and play it up, as opposed to looking out at the parking lot. I mean, if you put the exterior patio back there, you're looking at the parking lot. This, this way, you're looking at what is going to be, according to what I'm hearing, really nice landscaping. So I'm not wedded to that. But I just think that it's what you have here is that you're coming to see us at a point when you're really very flexible. And I would suggest that you play up what works visually. And um, if it can't be done mechanically for whatever reason, you know, I'll believe you. The barn. Something tells me that in the future there could be a use for that barn. If what you're offering, the product that you're offering, it takes off the way I think it's going to take off. I think it's going to be very successful. And I can see special events. It would require some special kind of um, licensing and zoning and that kind of stuff with the town, which you don't particularly want to talk about now, but it might happen. So I would suggest that it not get, uh, in the process, not get, um, what am I trying to say, uh, destroyed in any way, altered in any way that is not redeemable. Try to keep it as close to the basic barn as it can be for thinking about future use of it. I mean, that really sounds good to me. And other than that, um, I like the idea, again, of the shared driveway. It's just a natural. I mean, I'm sure it can be worked with. I can't imagine having to have two curb cuts there with that perfect one. Anyway, I'll shut up. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I'll speak briefly to your first point, which is something we actually discussed about the whole flip-flop flip building. And it's tough because if... One of their intentions, specific intentions moving forward with this is, uh, I don't have the site plan in front of me, is that this portion mm -hmm. be landscaped extremely well to the point where as you're walking in, it's, this is completely shielded. Are you telling me you're going to landscape a parking lot? Oh, We're going to I landscape think I would to shield. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I came back to the planning board. Yes, I mean. This is very exciting. You just go ahead and put it any old place you want. <laughs> because I can tell we've got some serious stuff that's going to be happening. This is good. This is really very good. Yeah. In all honesty, too, it's, it's to create intimate seating yes. in the back. Yeah. But in essence, it will shield the parking lot. You just go for it. <laughs> that was easy. Wasn't I think this is very exciting. I'm no longer curious. All right. Thank you. All right. That's all be <coughs> Roger, anything? Uh, actually, I think it's um, very interesting um, the way it's laid out. And uh, especially 
you know, from the street, it's going to look like the old farmhouse, from what I can gather. Um, just, is that correct? I, that's a good, good question. We really haven't gotten to that point yet. Um, it definitely, they definitely want it to feel like a much more modern restaurant, but it will still, it will still be a big barn and a farmhouse. What, what about, say that correctly? Hi everyone, uh, uh, my name is James Yao, I'm the owner of the property, and uh, PBS Enterprise is uh, one of our subsidiary, and he's going to be the project manager, that's Jimmy Liang. The reason I've been here and try to do this project is I'm part of the Scarborough also. I've been working with uh, Portland the past 20 years, finally bought a property down here as my personal residence, and uh, I want do this for three reasons. One is uh, I want to preserve the history because I like to what it is over there. It was not to touch the barn. It was been there in 1900. It has a lot of meaning to it. And uh, the other things I want to create some local job. And three, the third thing is I want to you know give back more to the community. Was um, the past 20 years, you know I come as an immigrant <laughs> since 1979 to the United States. I made it and. Most of the time, you know, I'm a city boy. I'm from New York. I moved around Los Angeles the first time I actually attended a town meeting. So it's kind of interesting, and we will try to, I will try to provide the funding. And I see a lot of restaurants in Shanghai, uh, New York, and also <coughs> Los Angeles, almost e everywhere. I've been traveling a lot. So, uh, and our industry, we've been providing uh, all the seafood packaging to approximately maybe 2,000 clients in the East Coast. So we have a lot of experience, so we want to try to make this thing work. So it's going to be um, part, part Korean barbecue and part um, Japanese sushi and also Chinese hot pot. It's a combination of three things. That's why we call it Asian fusion. It's kind of popular in New York, so if you have a chance to go down there. We're going to have another one opening uh, maybe within this year. So something that we try to supply and also we do as probably a franchise. And we're going to provide the funding in the future time. So um, it's, if there's anything, you know, as an owner, I'm willing to invest. <coughs> At the same time, I like to preserve history because I love history. And uh, I love this country and I, I want to you know, even after <laughs> we're all gone, I always want this thing to still be something to remember. You know, I want to be nice. You know, everything out to cold and uh, <coughs> everything done properly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that additional background. Just have another one. Sure. Um, what about outdoor? Any plans for any outdoor dining at all? Yeah. Would that be in that landscape spot that Sue wants? It's in the back. <laughs> in the front. It's just really the back. <laughs> Correct. You can grab that, grab that microphone. The, the, uh, there you go. Thanks. Um, yeah, we, uh, it's still up for discussion, but uh, an exterior area. I was even thinking maybe partially covered with a, an Asian-style pergola type of setting. And just one last question. Uh, behind this property, isn't that where the, um, they're doing the, uh, the um, loading for the other the, development? The preload there? Yeah, the preload. Yeah. So it's close, but no. there's a couple of properties yeah, between Walmart. oh, between Walmart's back Walmart's there. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay. With the Walmart. Yeah. I'm all done. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Nick? Yes. I, uh, I'm not being rude and playing on my phone right now. I'm actually uh, looking at the satellite images of the area to, to kind of get a better feel of this. And one of the questions um, I have is this stream. And either it's really, really well hidden by the uh, trees in the picture here I have, or it has got to be minuscule. It's hidden. It, it's hidden by the trees. We had um, Jim Logan from Albert Frick and Associates out there. He flagged our wetlands. Mm -hmm. He also did look, located the stream. If you drive out there in a car, I bet even with the snow that we're going to get tomorrow, you'll still be able to see it. It's probably two to three feet wide. There's a 36-inch culvert that crosses under Muzzy Road. 
So that right there tells me that it's fairly That was my, my follow-up question. Um, okay. So uh, an another question then. You've got the setback line, the 75-foot stream setback line going around. And just out of curiosity, that setback line, anything encroaching upon that, you have to get a specialized permit for? Is that correct? Correct. So... So With the stream it. setback, there's 75 feet. So between the 25 foot setback from the stream and 75 foot from the stream, um, we would need to file for any activities adjacent to a natural resource, which is a NRPA permit by rule. Okay. So yes, there there's some permitting for that. There'll be some stormwater permitting as as well through the DEP. So that whole, basically, that whole new addition would you would be trying to get a specialized permit for for that. Correct. Okay. How. How far in does, I mean, it looks like it's pretty close, the corner of the addition to the stream. That's, that's the setback. That, this, this line right here is a 25-foot mm -hmm. setback. The stream itself so is it's right on the 25? Feet. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and then a follow-up question real quick. The property owner next to you, what, what is that? Uh, for, is, it's a business. It's a good question. Uh, the existing building to the, my, my right. Creative imaging. Oh, this one? Yes. Creative imaging. It, it's a relatively new building from what I gather. Mm -hmm. I know um, our traffic engineer, Bill Bray, worked on the traffic study for that building previously. That's kind of how we got a lot of our information up front on this, is he'd, he'd already looked at it. Do you know what their operational hours are, by chance, is it to 5 p.m.? I, I don't, but that's part of our homework to do, for sure. Okay, yeah, and, and where I'm driving with this is the, you know, I'm looking at the paved area around the building, and then the shared the shared driveway concept, which, uh, you know, I think if you can make it work, it's a good idea. Um, I, I do have concerns, though, just looking at the flow of traffic from around that building, how how that would be managed. I could see people peeling through Mussy Road into a straight shot into the, um, you know, a somewhat straight shot into the, to go get to the restaurant and uh, taking out a car heading this way. Um. <laughs> yeah, the the traffic flow currently in creative imaging is it's it's a two way driveway comes in and then the traffic flow splits mm -hmm. and becomes one way around that building. Right. So th this way coming out is, is one way. So so that's I mean yeah it, it there's a little bit of a challenge there on how we get right. safe vehicular movements in and out. Okay, that was yeah I just wanted to call that out as an area that would uh, you know be closely looked at at least by me uh, for safety reasons. The um, the concept of you know saving yeah, an old farmhouse, uh, I think it's fantastic. Um, the parking, uh, I think uh, much like our chairman on this, if we can reduce enormous parking fields in town, I am all in favor of doing so. Um, if you become very good friends with your neighbor next door, it looks to me like you even have an opportunity to share some parking. Uh, just <laughs> leave yourself some land behind you. But um, I think that's... From what I'm seeing, you know, for at this stage, uh, you know, that's probably probably it for me right now. I, you know, I, I see that you got to close the entrance and, and buffer the existing driveway. I, mean, I think that's good practice. As far as walkability, this is um, it's not an area of town that that I believe a whole lot of walking is going on. It could be mistaken. So if you are uh, I believe I, I caught wind of it may perhaps uh, looking for a waiver for the pedestrian sidewalks in front. Were you thinking of that? I don't think we've even got there yet. I don't. Right. I don't believe this is an area that has any sidewalks currently. I don't right. know that there'd be any reason for a sidewalk. Right. But. Okay. Um, I think that's it for me right now. Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Ron. Yeah, just a couple of things. Um, in the notes we got from staff, they talked about uh, you talk about proposing a 3,500 square foot addition, and then it, while maintaining the 2,103 square feet storage. But on on this, it, it's more like 6,000. What I, I guess you know, I'm, there's 300 square feet difference here. Where, where does that? I think. Understanding the zoning here is TVC3, we understand we're limited to 5,000 square feet of floor area. I think one of the questions we have is that we believe that's for restaurant use and believe that the storage portion of this would not qualify as that. And I'm waiting to see if, if that's a, a right assumption on our part or a wrong assumption on our part. 
the way it's really of, if, if I may at this point interject, yeah. it, it, the way it talks about it is floor area, so it's separate units. So there would have to be a, you know, we'd have to basically have a firewall between the two areas. The, the restaurant, even the storage component, that's still part of the restaurant activity. Um, and actually, that was one of the questions as well, and I thank Mr. Mazur for bringing it up. Um, in terms of the second floor offices, talks about 755 square feet, I think, of those. I guess the one thing that I uh, forgot to put in my staff comments and thought of after I sent them out is, is that part of the restaurant? Is that the, manage, the management of the, off, uh, the restaurant, or is that a different, off, you know, is that a, a second tenant at the site? But to the primary question, it is 5,000 square feet for each tenant. So um, the notion of the barn being used for storage, we, I think we'll have to tease that one out a bit more, but it, there is going to have to be some sort of, you know, we'll have to you know, take a look at what the ordinance definition of floor area talks about. And it talks about how you measure between units of occupancy and those sorts of things. So that could get, we may be able to, you know, talk about it as we move forward with this. How many seats are they expecting to have? I mean, that would fall into the, does it say? Yeah, 216. Oh, I, I missed that. Thank you. That, that, that number was used just based on parking, backing into it to, to give Mike an upper limit when he was doing his floor plan. So I think he's been, since working on that, I think we're we talked about it today, I think we're closer to the 150 range, which is where I was getting that reduction of about 16 parking spaces. Is, is that also include staff? Staff is still included in that. Currently we have 76, I'm saying reduce 16, that gets us to 60, and that 60 includes staff, uh, waiting area, bar stool seats. Okay, um, I also just want to reinforce what my fellow board member said about the flow of the traffic. I think he brought up a very good point of making sure that we don't have dodgems and dodge cars uh, in, the, in the final assessment of things. I think that was an excellent observation to be made. And uh, other than that, that's all I have at this particular moment. Thanks, Ron. John? I'm pretty good with it. I like the concept. I believe you know what we expect. Uh, I'll mention lighting. You've got some neighbors uh, to the west. Doesn't matter too much in the summertime, but in the wintertime, obviously we need to watch for the lighting. Uh, if we can do some you know, lighting that shuts off after you know midnight or whatever, that would be great. And, the, and Lee, you've been with, before us enough. You know what we're looking for. I'm all set. Thanks. Mike? Um, yeah, nice concept, and uh, I invite you to town. I wish you all the success in the world, and it's nice to hear that you're uh, willing to do whatever it takes to make this work. It looks pretty challenging to me, um, but I'll uh, I'll be paying attention and look forward to seeing every rendition that you bring forward. Um, so, um, that's about it for now. Yep. Nothing more to add. I think I, it, it's a great start. But uh, for instance, I don't I, I don't see how that uh, that dumpster area is going to work real well. You know, as far as picking it up, I applaud the fact that you hide it under cover and then rig it out when it needs to be emptied. But as far as how that works for a truck to get in there, I don't know. But those are the details that you know, you'll be working hard at. So I'll just wait for the next next rendition. By, by the way, Mr. Chair, excuse sure. me. It, it's nice to see another restaurant coming into town. I mean, I, I'm a big fan of that, so let me, let me. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Absolutely. Thanks. Just right kind of curious, do we know how old this, uh, this house is? You can research that, but it's right. actually one question I had for staff, and I don't know if you know off the top of your head, but maybe something to look into is whether this barn is a part of the inventory um, of the historic committee that they've, been, that they've put together. I think that that is a question that that I would like to have clarified anyway, is that there's been more activity at the council level with the Historic Society and want to make sure that what we do here is directly accessible. Mm -hmm. So this obviously needs to be looked at by somebody, and I don't know just what those 
those lines how they look anymore. So. Thanks. Can we take a look. Um, I don't have a whole lot to add that hasn't already been uh, mentioned or, or asked. I will echo my fellow board members in saying it sounds like a really interesting concept and hopefully can make it work. I think it'd be a great addition to the town. Um, and wish you the best with that. Uh, in terms of the, uh, the traffic flow and the potential shared access, as has been noted, um, that's certainly a, a big X factor and, and an issue to, to look at going forward. One question I have, and I don't recall seeing it or, or hearing it discussed yet, that sort of relates to that, at least as it pertains to potential sharing of the driveway with creative imaging, um, is whether this restaurant will serve lunch or strictly dinner or whether that's really been fleshed out at this point. Just thinking about how the hours might offset. You can come on up. Thank you. Uh, that's something that's going to have to sort out over here. Uh, maybe in the next couple of months. Depends on how, how everything goes. We have to do our marketing down here. It's not like New York. Because I, I know New York restaurants don't close until 4 in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect <laughs> that we can have that kind of hours. So I took my friends down there. It was 10 o'clock at midnight. Still people are on waiting line. So it's mm -hmm. not going to be the same. So it's going to be have something adjusted to the local right. marketing. So a market. Okay. Right. Thanks. Yeah, I think, I think the only place around here that's open then is well, Becky's uh, Diner yeah, for breakfast in the waterfront. Kind of uh, thank you very much. And I, so that's just building on that, uh, obviously, we'll look forward to hearing about any, as you sort that out, and when the time is right, you have those conversations potentially with, with the neighbor. Um, we'll look to see how that evolves. Um, we'll look forward to seeing architecture as it as it gets developed in the landscaping there's a lot going on there and it sounds like a promising intriguing concept but it's sort of hard to visualize right now how it would all come together but conceptually it sounds promising um, uh, as uh, mr. McGee suggested uh, I definitely am in favor of whatever parking reduction you can do um, both for the sake of reducing impervious space and just you know, generally not overbuilding the parking, but also to minimize the, the wetlands impact for their own sake and for the sake of the, of the applicant um, so that you're not spending a lot of money on wetlands mitigation. You can put some of that money into landscaping and all the uh, good things that you want to do for the site itself. So um, hopefully you can sharpen your pencil and, and uh, pare that down. Beyond that, Again, Lee, you know the things we look for coming out of uh, sketch review, and we look forward to seeing lighting and landscaping and all those things. And um, I think that pretty well covers it for now. Mr. So, Chairman. Thank you. Any another one? Right oh, sure. One more. Mike. Um, uh, through the chair uh, for staff, can the, can the barn be viewed as an accessory use to the restaurant and not have a lim limit to its floor area? I mean, just something to look at, yeah, I think, well, because because accessory uses are to what? Accessory to what? Right. Yeah, we'll have to take a look at it, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Yeah. Thank you. We'll look forward to seeing it again. Yeah. Item number seven. Susan Bailey Clo. Bailey's Lobster Pound requests shoreland zoning and site plan review for expansion of pier structure at 9 Avenue 6. Jay? Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this application is uh, before the board under the provisions of our shoreland zone zoning ordinance, Section 15C. Uh, that's the pr those are the provisions that talk about piers, wharves, and docks. Um, I know this isn't something the board typically uh, delves into. We don't see a whole lot of these, so um, I just wanted to point out uh, that particular section and those items. Uh, the other question or um, uh, component to this would be that since it is an expansion of a commercial site, it would trigger site plan review. Um, so we'll need to understand, really have a good articulated sense of what the use of the pier is going to be so that we can really understand how those provisions of our site plan review ordinance that we are more accustomed to 
um, applying are going to uh, fit and or apply in this instance. Um, so yeah, that sort of touches on the main point of really trying to understand exactly what is occurring, uh, what the proposed use of the dock is. Um, there was some question in staff's interpretation or reading of the applicant's materials in terms of the timing of the pier, the dock, the existing dock. There's a proposed dock, and so thought it would be useful. I really wanted to be sure the applicant was prepared to sort of walk through that because there was a new pier that was expanded, I think, in 2010 or something to that effect. Then these piers were, the pilings were replaced at some point when the decking, so again, I, there's some confusion in the application in terms of that. Um, and finally, um, it really, a lot of that relates to getting back to that shoreland zoning ordinance, um, section 15C. The preponderance of the, you know, one through seven sort of talk about ensuring that the natural characteristics aren't disturbed, and we do have a DEP permit. Um, but I think two of the more qualitative questions that were raised are really ensuring that a pier, dock, or wharf isn't any bigger. It, uh, the two provisions that we sort of highlighted were that the facility is no larger than necessary to carry on the activity and that um, that there be no structure or pier established unless it requires direct access to the waterfront. So again, that gets back to this notion of ensuring we have a full understanding of the scope and utility of the pier. Um, so with that, Mr. Chair, I turn it back to you and be happy to answer questions along the way as needed. Thanks, Jay. And back to you, Lee. Thank you. Once again, um, one interesting project, um, I think expansion of the pier is, is maybe the wrong term in, in my opinion. This is actually reconstruction of a pier and getting into the legalities of how long a pier has been in disrepair before you reconstruct it, maybe where you get into reconstruction versus um, a, a pure addition. Uh, <coughs> the piles for this part of the deck that we're going to um, Construct were have been in there since the 40s. They were replaced in 2013. Now the the yellow portion, as shown here on the plan, that part of the pier was reconstructed. Um, it was permitted in 2009, reconstructed in 2010. At the time, the piles that were in place for this dark brown area, the 485 square feet that we're talking about, were still in place. Um, they, at the time, they didn't have the money or the inclination to reconstruct it. Um, and, and we questioned, were they really there? Did they get reconstructed? Um, this is a picture in winter of 2011. You can see this is taken off the new portion of the pier that's probably down in this area right here. Um, it may be hard to see, but there's, there's old piles right there. Um, 2013, Bailey's came in and said, well, those piles are going to fall over. Let's put in new piles. They did. They thought they were under the guise of the old permit. They said this is just re um, maintenance. Um, turns out they got themselves in a little bit of trouble. They didn't have permits from the DEP or the Army Corps to do that. This summer, we went through and filed permits after the fact with the DEP and the Army Corps. We have both of those permits. They were submitted as part of this package. In order to complete the full permitting loop, we are now back before the Planning Board because this is an activity in the shoreland zone. So, the new piles were put in. They sit there now. We are just looking for permission to construct the decking and the railing um, to put that back. The use of this is, act, is, is purely fishing. It's, it's stated in the DEP um, summary under Section B. It's for storage of fishing and lobster gear, um, mainly lobster traps, lo the plastic lobster bins. Um, that they use for the processing facility at Bailey's Lobster Pound. Um, this is not part of the restaurant. Um, will it be open um, to the other deck? Yes, it will be open, but there will not be seating there. Um, it is purely for storage. Look over my notes. I think that's all I have. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Um, would you have the opportunity here for public comment? If there's anyone who has any questions or comments on this one, I'm guessing no. All right. Uh, so before we move on to board uh, discussion, question for staff. It's I guess sort of procedural. Mm -hmm. Given you mentioned that there was in your in your memo and in your introduction a minute ago that 
there was maybe kind of a threshold question about the extent to which this would fall under the purview of site plan review. Yeah. And I guess based on what's been explained just now by the applicant's representative, what is your interpretation of sort of the applicability of that? And um, I guess the related question is what action, what specific action, if any, are we potentially contemplating here as a board? Well, uh, to answer your last question, I'm sure the applicant would like you to uh, consider a, an approval. But um, in terms of the uh, ordinance requirements, we have a fairly thro low threshold for our site plan review ordinance, which ostensibly says any non-residential activity that expands by greater than 100 square feet triggers site plan review. So I would say that this does trigger site plan review. Hearing the applicant's clear description, and, and I, staff did see in the DEP permit the activity, but we wanted to be sure that that you know, was also the applicant's <laughs> position on this, um, that you know, a lot of our 18 standards of the site plan review are unlikely to really come into effect here. I think what we do need to have understanding, though, is you know, does this expansion will increase the need for parking spaces? That we, I just don't know at this point. It seems like it may or may not, depending on if there's going to be new fishermen operating out here. I, I don't know the answer. Any particular lighting, that would seem applicable. Um, those are two that jump off the top of them in my mind. But again, without having the evidence before this meeting, um, I think you know, in terms of staff's review, I, I think what the applicant is presenting makes a host of sense. But I feel you know that there's a lot of it sort of there was a lot of things that we weren't sure of coming into the meeting, so we haven't done a full vetting of the site plan review ordinance to see what may or may not apply because we mm -hmm. we didn't understand that that scope. So um, I would okay, All right, thank you. Well, given that, and I'll I'll uh, open it up to board discussion in a minute. But I guess my initial thought, based on that, as you say, it, it's sort of the equivalent at this point of. Now we kind of have the background and understand uh, what it is that we're really reviewing, what the nature of that review is. I guess I see it as roughly analogous to having sort of just gotten the proposal in a sense. Um, and so I guess I'll, I'm certainly open to hearing what my fellow board members say, but I guess I might be somewhat reluctant to think about actually moving toward an approval tonight based on that because the staff just indicated there may be some additional vetting that needs to be done. Um, but this is, a, again, it's sort of a unique circumstance, and it's not the type of thing that we see that often. Um, Susan? I just need to review where we were a few minutes ago. Um, what we're trying to do is replace, what the applicant wants to do is replace what was there. The use was there. We're not, in, we're not enlarging the use. Is it going to affect parking? No. <clears throat> it seems to me as if what we're doing here is just trying to bring things back to where it was. And if there's a way that we can get that put out as a motion, it covers a multitude. I mean, we're not going to have any change of use. We're not going to have any food. We're not going to have any tables. We're not going to have any public access. We're not going to have any additional parking. Um, it just seems to me as if this is an opportunity to not make a big deal about it. And if anything changes, then they'll have to come back to the planning department in one form or another. If the use changes in one way or another, they're going to have to come back. So it seems to me as if it's fine. Question for the for the uh, based on what Susan is is saying, I guess I'm a little confused because I heard expansion of more than 100 feet or something. Where, where am I confused on that? So, uh, and maybe uh, Mr. Allen, can you, uh, if you don't mind, uh, could you please explain again? So those piers that you showed in 2011 were mm -hmm. pretty deteriorated. There Correct. wasn't any decking on them at that time. There presumably hadn't been any decking on them for some years beforehand. We can probably pretty comfortably say five to ten years beforehand, yes. if not longer. Right, and that, that's why I brought up the point of, so, from a DEP's point of view, it's, it, it counts as, if it's more than two years, it counts as a reconstruction. 
my, our contention is right. well, it was always it was a it, there was a dock there back in the the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and it fell into a state of disrepair. And what you saw was the remaining piers. The piers were replaced in 2013. They thought they were still under the guise of the permit from 2010. That was not the case. So, so th that that's why I'm saying that right. it's more of a technicality. But mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, it's a big technicality when it comes to is it pure, is it a deck replacement or is it a deck reconstruction? And and so I guess I was getting to Mrs. Ugla's point about are we just bringing the site back to what it was? Yes, we're bringing back to what it was, but we're bringing back to what it was maybe 20 or 30 years ago, not what it was within the last three, four, five since we've had a site plan review ordinance probably. So. I guess just administratively, it's staff's contention that it would be helpful for the applicant to provide. This probably is a, uh, a you know, not going to be a big deal in mm -hmm. the end. I think the applicant has, in their presentation, mm -hmm. probably answered the questions, but without the benefit of written evidence in the record. Right. It could probably be taken care of by chair and staff at the end of whatever we do this time. I mean, in other words, I don't think we have to make a big deal about this. What is it called when you do that? An administrative, administrative approval. approval. It's just a, just okay. a thought. Yeah. Thank you. Mike, I'll start with you down there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, <clears throat> do you have any uh, photo evidence? Of when the deck existed? We have pictures of Mr. Bailey um, shelling lobsters, loading lobsters from a UP photo taken in 1999. Unfortunately, you see him from here up, but you know, and you can see the building in the background, so you know he's standing on something. You, oh. just, you just can't see what the something is. He's not walking is. on water. Exactly. <laughs> I can guarantee that. <laughs> but, oh. so, so, we use that evidence in conjunction with tes testimony from him and from Mrs. Bailey with the DEP, and, and they said, yeah, we get it, and that's why they granted us the permit. Um, to me, I thought the high hurdle was getting over the DEP and the Army Corps. We passed that hurdle, and thinking this is this is a, still a big deal because it's construction in the shoreline zone, but I think this is a, simp a, a lower hurdle for us to, to cross. And uh, th was there any time that the, that the piers didn't exist? No. Well... So oh, in 1920s. I mean. Well, well, yeah, in the last, yeah. Uh, so uh, it was oh, the deck, even though the decking wasn't there, the demarcation of, of where it existed, absolutely, was always there. Yeah, as as far, I mean, the problem is with aerial photos. You go back to 1998, and they start the the quality is worse and worse, and you really can't determine anything. It's only recently that you can really tell from the good aerial photos. We just know from their evidence and some of the pictures. We have some pictures from the 60s that show the pier there. Um, I'd be more than happy to share with staff. It's kind of hard to decipher, but you can look and, and kind of see it in, in the background. And the use, the use is, uh, has always been the same and will continue to be the same as proposed to continue to be Correct. the same. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I don't see how... I would like to think that this isn't going to take up a lot of our time also. Um, and, I'm, you know... I, I certainly understand staff's concerns. We want to make sure that these boxes are checked and looked at. But it appears to me that you're prepared to answer those those questions, and, and we'll just hope that the DEP, in fact, was the bigger hurdle to go over and, and not that, here. That, that's our hope. Okay. Correct. So I, I don't have any concern whatsoever with what's proposed. Thanks, Mike. John? I agree with the other board members. This can be dealt with administratively. Um, and I appreciate your caution putting it putting it forth to us but I think you guys can deal with it sure. Thanks. Ron? just one comment Lee. you said it's going to be open there are on the other side some tables right okay correct what kind of precautions are they going to take you got sometimes during the summer kids running around on that deck and everything and if this is going to be an open deck correct um, I know there'll be railings around. The railings will have the protections that all the other the railings that are out there now. If you're familiar with it, that it, it'll basically meet ADA requirements as far as railing goes. Um, we stated to them, to the Baileys and to us, that they're going to be careful about stacking. You know, people may get over there, but it's not a place that is going to be encouraged. It's not going to be a place for, you know, there's not going to be tables over there. 
I'll bring it up to them, though, because, uh, you know, I understand what you're saying, but, uh, again, young kids don't read signs, and I want to make sure that uh, uh, they take every precaution and maybe they can stack the, the, the traps and so forth so that you can't even get by them, even though it's a common space. But that's just the only concern I have. Other than that, it, you know, I agree with my fellow board members. Thanks, Ron. Nick? Um, yeah, I, I just got a quick question. I, and maybe this is just a ignorance on my part, but there's a, a note here, number 10, that says, the replacement deck will not exceed 20 feet in height over the existing dock or pier structure. Why would you put that in there? There is a series of notes to meet the shoreland ordinance, okay. and one of them says, you will not build 20 feet higher than the closest adjacent structure. So that was more of just to say, no, we're not going to. It's going to be the same height as the deck, so it won't be 20 feet uh, high. That answers my question. <laughs> Thanks. Um, no, I mean, I think um, I'm probably willing to go ahead and sign off tonight if my other board members feel like it's uh, something that should be administratively reviewed by our chair and staff. I am perfectly comfortable with that route as well. So. Thanks. Roger? Sure. Um, <clears throat> It's, it seems to me what, what happened is um, Mr. Bailey went and just replaced the old piles with the new piles. Then somebody said to him, hey, you can't just do that. <laughs> and so there's no, there's no additional piles from what was there originally. Correct. They were, put, they were placed right next to. In fact, he said, if you want to dig up the sand, I can show you the old ones where we cut them off and put the new ones in right next to them. And if somebody didn't say something, he probably would have put a deck on it too. Exactly. So. Thank you. Do you have anything else, Susan? Okay. Thanks. Um, well, I think in light of everything we've, uh, we've learned and, and discussed over the last few minutes, um, I'm perfectly happy with taking on the responsibility of, of doing an administrative review. Once staff has had a chance to vet this a little bit more, I don't think that will really add a whole lot of time to the process. And um, as would be the case with any administrative review, should there be something that comes up that seems, in, in my mind as the chair, to put us over at some tipping point where I feel like it would be appropriate to bring it back to the full board, then you know, we'll still reserve the right to do that. But I would imagine we should be able to, to take care of it fairly quickly. I would think so. All right. <laughs> yeah. Great. Does anyone have anything else? Jay? Do you want a motion to codify that? Or are you happy with just moving to administrative? I think I'm happy with it. It's been pretty yeah. clear in the yeah. record, I think. So, okay. All right. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Is there a town planner's report? Um, let's see. Just again to update the board, um, staff is putting the final touches on our technical manual. Hopefully, uh, we'll have our. I'd intended to meet, but we our schedule sort of got convoluted. So hopefully before your next meeting, we'll have something for you to take a look at in terms of that. Um, so that was all I have. Administra in administrative amendment report. Yes, I have two things to report. Uh, one, uh, up at 381 Payne Road, uh, Neptune Properties received approval for Northeast Civil Solutions to move their offices into that location. As you may know, they had an unfortunate incident at the Route 1 offices, and they needed some additional parking. Um, and so we were able to um, take a look at a, a small parking field expansion for them in, to, uh, as an administrative action. The other item is at Bella Vista, that's the assisted living uh, facility right here on Black Point Road as you approach Oak Hill intersection. Uh, they received an administrative approval for a small addition of two sidewalk areas that were needed to ensure that there was uh, appropriate egress from emergency doors as well as a seating area. Um, pretty, pretty minor change there. Um, do, they, those, do they have an opening date? They are shooting for a CO certificate of occupancy late late February or March. Sometime in that time frame is anticipated when um, that would occur. Thank you. The site looks to be in pretty good shape. Um, there's some minor things, but ostensibly the site's coming along and they're, they're going crazy on the building. <laughs> I know. I can go by there about yep. 15 times a day. Thanks, Jay. 
Any planning board correspondence beyond the uh, Burnham Heights emails that we referenced earlier? No? All right. Any planning board comments? Yeah, I have one. Uh, we had a transportation committee meeting on January 13th, and uh, the items that we're currently working on, with one very personal to me, is the railroad crossing quiet on Winnix Neck. Uh, and we're moving forward with that, believe it or not. Uh, and uh, so uh, uh, the, the railroad is dragging its heels like it usually does, but um, it, I don't want to be overly optimistic, but it, it certainly looks a lot more promising than it did a year ago as far as uh, the, uh, uh, because it meets all the requirements. What we have down there is meeting all the, all the requirements. And then we did an update on the Holmes Payne Road intersection. Some of the work has already been done. Uh, to alleviate, uh, we, we want people using the traffic lights as opposed to the bridge that goes on to Payne Road down the road. And we're trying to block that off and some of the, and make it easier to take right hand turns at the light uh, near the uh, uh, racetrack. And some of the work has already been done to widen that. And uh, the next steps uh, uh, submit uh, to SIP for money to uh, finish the project. But, that's moving along. Um, and then we've been working on Eastern Trail design and construction schedule there and just an update on that. And that's uh, in progress. Uh, so those are the three items that we took up. And uh, it's quite an interesting committee, much more than I thought it would be, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ron. <laughs> no, I'm being serious for a change. <laughs> I'm usually <laughs> being my <laughs> Al. Um, my only comment is, uh, again, welcome Roger to the board, and great to have a full board again. And uh, I'm glad we're getting out of here about an hour before the blizzard warning officially starts. Yeah, we'll see if we have to tell our way out. But um, if there's nothing else, I'll move that we adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. We do have a plan to sign. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt the gathering. This is Foster Farm.